Are you okay? I can't even look at you. <laughs> <laughs> this season's crazy. I genuinely don't think I had any clue where it was going. And it was such a fun ride. You both were fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Can you both talk to me a little bit about your character creation process, both with your Dave's Video World characters and your VHS, like in the VHS characters and finding that dichotomy between the two? Um, well, I knew right away that I wanted to be John McClane. Um, just, I don't know, you have like, sometimes before seasons, you have a bunch of different ideas. Uh, I did not. I w was just sort of like, this is all I can really think of. Um, and then when I when we chose Lake Elsinore, I knew it was going to be like a California suburb. And I think that Beardsley at one point made the joke of it being Lake Elsinore and Brennan just went, OK, yes, that's what it is. <laughs> um, and so once we uh, discovered that, I was like, it made me think of suburban California. And so I, I thought of uh, the OG from the OC, uh, Vicki Gonvalson from The Real Housewives of Orange County, uh, mixed with Paul Blart, Mall Cop. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for Liv, uh, I think I, uh, Liv came before Kingskin for me, and Dave's Video World uh, kind of reminded me of uh, the record store from Empire Records. And so Liv is basically just Liv Tyler, uh, from Empire Records, but it's Liv Skyler. And then Kingskin obviously is Kingpin <laughs> and was just like, what is a big villain? And I think um, thinking of just like the silhouette of the the action cast uh, is fun to have a big guy. In there. I love it. And then before we get into the craziness of the Never Stop Light Up world, Izzy, I love the betrayal you play when Paula realizes that Liv has been stealing things from stores and just the immediate doesn't know how to handle this situation. Can you talk about <laughs> leaning into that drama before we even got into the insanity of the world inside the VHS? Um, well, I just loved, like, you know, the connections that sort of were organically formed through us improvising um, and just thinking about how people relate to each other in a, a small town work environment. Um, and then this type of sort of, sort of like middle-aged woman, you know, it just felt like she would be really disappointed in a young woman for something as like harmless as like petty theft. Um, and, you know, I feel like Midwestern moms maybe show their love through disappointment. Um, <laughs> I don't have a Midwestern mom, so I don't know, but that just sort of feels like the fun. <laughs> I do, you're not wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liv, Kingskin was unexpectedly sweet in how you played them, I think. One of my favorite is just the arc from slowly crushing someone's head in a door to just consistently giving Doug meat pep talks. Can you talk about how <laughs> that arc for you as a player of going from I'm gonna be playing this like big evil villain to actually maybe he's really supportive of his crew? Um, well, one lens to look at it could be that I couldn't commit to a character choice. Um, but also <laughs> I do think that um yeah. Like, it was very fun to play. Uh, I did genuinely want to crush those heads. And then I did feel bad after uh, towards how I, I I treated my henchmen. So, I don't know, just shooting from the hip, I guess. <laughs> I, I think that. Alex just couldn't help but be sweet and caring yes. for other people. <laughs> I love that we have a villain that feels bad about how they treat their henchmen. We need more of them. I thought that was great. <laughs> what inspired the decision to try and crush G13's head to save Usha? Because that was insane and amazing. I thought it was a reasonable choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I guess it was like, you know, what are what what skills do we have? How crazy can this game get? Uh, will Brennan really let us die? And it seemed like he was willing to to maybe let that happen. So <laughs> I love it. And then Izzy, you got to jump behind the GM screen for a minute. Can you talk about that experience and kind of the feeling that overtakes you as you watch the clock count down and you try to do everything you want to within those 60 seconds. I don't remember anything except for being very excited and just, you know, sort of being on autopilot and just, you know, being like, just say anything. Um, and being like, whoa, cool. My baby's GMing right now. Um, and I think, you know, I think I said everything right. I think I made all the uh, right decisions. <laughs> I have no, I have no recollection. I have no idea what I say. I think you did it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I think you did great. You <laughs> got to what Reka did and give Brennan carte blanche. So I think it worked out pretty well. <laughs> um, what for both of you was kind of the most surpri uh, surprising part of your character's arcs from when you first conceived of the character to where they ended up by the end of the season, uh, starting with Alex? I think I didn't expect King Skin's name to be Stephen Skin. Um, that was that was a big surprise to me. Uh, <laughs> I did name him after my brother, whose name is Stephen. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah oh that yeah i love the reveal that he had also been really on the the straight and narrow similar to Liv's current path before turning to a life of crime yeah i, I brendan was just really good at like weaving everyone's characters arcs together it was like it was shocking i i, I can never believe when he's able to do something like that then like I didn't know anything about like Cosmo Chase or anything like that. So having the um, reflection projection of the lives was very just like, ah, oh, dang, you did it again. How cool. I loved it. I love when you threw Brennan off by guessing that the- That was insane. <laughs> that was, that crazy. was crazy. <laughs> so great. Uh, and then Alex, you made such a cool choice uh, near the end where everyone's kind of giving those vials of like super enhanced steroids to uh, Wendell to try and like save, you know, uh, but you made the choice that you're, it made more sense for your character not to do that, to not go along with everyone and to kind of finally make the selfish choice. What inspired that for you in the moment and why you thought that was or I just knew that was the right choice for your character versus kind of just going along with this almost tropey climactic moment. I think Liv as a character probably had a lot of resentment of, of um, uh, doing things for other people. Not even that like people had asked her to do necessarily. And, and um, yeah, it felt maybe like a breaking point for her to to do this very selfish choice choice, and it was kind of scary, uh, even as a player of like, oh, this is unlikable, and I don't I don't know what will happen after or how to come back from it. But um, yeah, I, I it felt like a safe place to make that choice, knowing that my fellow players would would know. What, what did had what to do after i don't know but i did feel very selfish and bad making the choice i loved it i thought it was great i think you have to make selfish choice sometimes if that fits for your character izzy one of the dynamics i loved in this was paula and russell especially as paula kind of starts to call out russell's behavior and makes him really sort of think about how he doesn't make connections can you talk about kind of playing off beardsley in those moments of both very great comedy, but also really insightful character moments. Um, I think that they, I think it has to do with like, you know, Beardsley is just a great improviser and role player. Um, and so you can see that their 
performing that arc. Um, and then I was just trying to support it by, by calling it out. And, you know, Brennan was laying the groundwork for it. And, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's really wonderful to have such, um, you know, to be surrounded by the best improvisers and actors in the world. Um, there's so much support and you feel like, you know, if you're able to sort of like give someone a, an assist in those moments, it, it just feels great. Did you each have kind of a favorite dynamic that you got to play with, with your characters and another character? Because I think everyone had such great moments with every other character. I think it was so fun to discover the dynamic of each pairing. Cause I think maybe like, oh, uh, going into it, there was one that I was like, it'll be most fun to uh, like play off of this. And then it just um, constantly changed. And also I feel like we found so much just improvising in different pairs. Yeah, I I liked the, the, the sort of like arc that, uh, Paula and Usha took where Paula was like, I'm not like you to being like, you're my girl. <laughs> We're the old bitches. Um, that was fun. Uh, yeah, I feel like everyone became very raw. All of the characters became very raw with each other by the end. Yeah, this had way more emotional beats than I think I expected. And it was so great. <laughs> And watching Brennan just go completely off the walls is always very, very fun. <laughs> As you guys try and figure out what's going on. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Never Stop Blowing Up is amazing. Izzy, congratulations on the Kickstarter. I'm very excited for the movie. I love Thank you, Caitlin. Izzy's big family reunion. That was so much fun. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Alex has a really awesome film uh, coming out too that's started screening places. Awesome. It's just a short film. It's no feature. Hey. Support. Hey, Definitely. buddy. Hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> you do have a turbo token from <gasps> earlier if you wanted to add one to that role. And I would explode. And you would explode. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay. Woo!